Rangers fans, welcome to the to Liberty Blue, the best Rangers podcast in town. I am Andrew Chelney alongside Nick Zararis. We scream about the Rangers so that you don't have to. This is episode 47, live on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, and we're available wherever you get your podcasts. The Rangers just lost game seven, and they didn't just lose it, Nick. They got absolutely embarrassed. No show. A total no show. Tyler Mott moved his feet. Maybe the only skater, I would say, who had a notable game. Shosturkin was great. He gave him a chance. The game was 0-0 after one. You thought maybe they'd get better as they go along. Usually by the second period when Igor stands on his head, usually they can bear it out. Nothing on the power play. Again, that was a recurring theme in this series. When they were able to score on the power play, they were able to win. When they weren't, they weren't. And we're at a weird spot now. This team had really high expectations. We both expected them to make it past this point. At least we looked at the goalie trump card being the great equalizer. We both thought the Devils were probably a more talented team, but thought the goaltending and the experience would ultimately carry the Rangers through. And now we're sitting here wondering kind of what went wrong because there were glimpses of a good team in this series and it never consistently strung together. Kind of like what happened during the regular season. I mean, this is just the, this, uh, this is a team that won the first two games handily, mostly because the devils didn't know what the playoffs looked like in the first two games, the Rangers experience took over and they dominated the first two. The devils were not prepared for the moment. And the and the Rangers ran them over, and then the Devils and the Rangers played well in Game Three, and but Dougie Hamilton won that game for them, and the and the Devils just absolutely flipped a switch. That that game, looking back they got at that it, little bit of confidence. All the if the Rangers confidence. won Game Three and stepped on the necks of the Devils, this wouldn't have happened. They were so cute with the puck. They tried the Sports Center top 10 highlight real plays that didn't work throughout the entire season. And guess what? Didn't work in the playoffs. Color me shocked. You know, Nick, I would have thought that all of a sudden the passing lanes would have been opened wide, just wide, wide. The seas parted for all of these crisp, beautiful passing plays at the, you know, that all the stars kept trying and never worked. And yet they kept trying so, them, and they never worked. And and the Devils, the the door opened just a little bit, little bit after Game Three, and the Devils stuck their foot in that little open, in in that little just throwaway, and then they busted the door wide open. And the Rangers never quite got a handle of it. They they won Game Six, but they, the the Devils were always in control. It was never close. I have been getting like the recurring stream. Like this always happens when the Rangers get eliminated. It's like having someone pass away because I get like 50 consolation texts. Sorry, the Rangers yeah. lost. Like that's, that's what's trickling in in the top right corner of my computer screen and why I keep looking over there. Very confused. And then I remember, oh yeah, that's right. That This is what people associate with me with, unfortunately. Yeah. So we talked about it on Monday last week. We said the longer this series went, the more the devils would start to believe they could do this. And after game five, we went into game six last week. We went into game six kind of, okay, get to game seven. Anything can happen in a game seven. You worry about it when you get there. And clearly they ex they used up everything they had left in game six because they no-showed tonight. We, you tweeted it. Emily v Viglin tweeted it. Th this was Tyler Mott was their best player tonight on a team with multiple guys who were going to have Hall of Fame candidacies, multiple guys who've been all-stars, award winners. If Tyler Mott is your best player, we, we have a lot more. If Tyler Mott is the player that is showing the most understanding of the game, that's an issue. You talked about it before, the, the emphasis on the horizontal passes, especially in the neutral zone, that are really hard to get through against good teams because good teams are just going to step up and they're going to take away that lateral pass and you're just going to be turning the puck over. 
We said this on our series preview episode two weeks ago. When the devils get rolling on you downhill, it has the short field effect. Ray Ferraro talked about this on the broadcast. It's like it's a field position struggle. If the devils only have to go halfway up the ice to get to the offensive zone, they're going to spend a lot of the game in the offensive zone. And that's what happened tonight. The devils spent good minute, minute 15 clips in the offensive zone. And the only line the Rangers had who understood the assignment of, hey, we need to slow this down, like half court, like if you're a basketball team playing a tempo team that relies on transition we got to slow it down we got to milk this shot clock to eight, seven six seconds and really give ourselves a, a chance to catch our breath on defense that was the thing about tonight was they never got settled in this game like usually after the first period when Igor stands on his head they come out better in the second period like okay we're good now and you know like it's something that they have to meet like a threshold or something but they played atrociously tonight they played atrociously in game five they played yep. pretty damn bad in game four yep. we're not gonna do the big picture stuff there's an entire summer unfortunately the season ending in the first week of may means we have a lot of time to fill so we're not gonna get liberate too much on the yeah. big like the roster the coach it's but they doubled down on the group from last year. They said, if we just tweak things a little bit and we amplify our core guys, we amplify Zabinijad, Panarin, Kreider, Fox, Truba, our young guys come along, we'll get a deadline addition or two, we feel pretty good about our group, and you are left at the same impasse the Rangers were kind of at after last year's playoffs. I would argue after the 2017 playoffs where you like all your guys individually. You love Zabinajad's game. He's set a career high in points this year. You love Kreider's game. He's had two of his best seasons of careers in his late 30s. Panarin's been close to a point per I, – I don't know if it's still the case or not, but for the first like three and a half years Panarin was a Ranger, he had more games with two points than games with zero points. I think that ended this season, but for a long stretch, Panarin's been one of, if not the best forwards in the history of the Is he going to show up in the playoffs would... one day? Or... I think part of the issue, I think there's a real undercurrent, and you saw the talk, this get talked about last year, and it got talked about this year. They got my man trying to play defense, and because he's focused on defense, he's not doing things offensively. He's limited creatively, and that's not a great comeback, but that is what you saw in this series. He did not have as much success in transition, which is what he's his best. That's his best trait. He is the Rangers' best forward at gaining the zone and letting other guys catch up. The problem is the Rangers don't have guys who can play with that skill set. God bless Vinny Trocek. He's a really solid, really good player. He has no elite traits. He's good. He has no elite traits. He doesn't have finish, high-end finishing talent. He's not a great playmaker. He's good at everything. He's not great sure. at anything. Those types of guys, like Ryan Strom, you think about the who's played that right-wing spot with them over the course of the last couple of years. You talk about Colin Blackwell, Jesper Foss, Dryden Hunt. This year, you saw Kako. You saw Lafreniere. You saw Kane. You saw Tarasenko. You saw Jimmy Vesey. You saw Barkley Goodrow. It's hard to play with high-end players. I understand that. But the Rangers have constructed this roster in a way that it, it really – I understand why they constructed the roster this way. A lot of guys kind of leveraged their way here or wanted to be here, and the Rangers were enthusiastic about good players wanting to come here. But they weren't particularly conscientious of how those pieces fit together. We, I have been writing about this for – when were the bubble playoffs? Three years ago? Four years ago? Three years ago, I think. At this the point. fall of yeah, the fall of twenty yeah, yeah the fall yeah, of twenty twenty yeah. yeah. Three years ago, when the Rangers lost to the Hurricanes, I was writing the Rangers are a rush based offense. Rush based yep. offense dries up in the playoffs. You have a harder time doing that consistently because you were going to play defensive or you were going to play better teams with better defensive structures. And when that cross team pass isn't there, you're not going to be able to convince guys like Kreider, like Zabinijad, like Panarin, hey guys, we know this works for. 50 of the 82 games in the regular season, but you need to fundamentally change how you want to play in the playoffs. You can't just turn it on and off. It's why we harped on it the last month of the regular season. We talked about it for the entire year prior. They needed better habits. We they talked needed about better it. habits we, all year. We talked about it the entire year. We talked about it when they got eliminated last year, where yeah. if you run this back, you know, the Rangers struggled at five on five last year. And we, we talked about it ad nauseum where the Rangers relied on their power play to score them goals and five on five, just try to hold on as best you can. The devils had, the devils took multiple penalties 
in the first yeah. period. They, the, they essentially gave the Rangers a red carpet to win the game. The Rangers were so terrified of shooting the puck of because and I tweeted this out, you know, in the first period as well. Like Chris Kreider has scored a million goals in this series, deflecting the puck into the net. That, that that's it. He scored so many goals just being in front of the net and deflecting shots in. And the Rangers then in this game seven refused to get the puck on the net on the power play that has worked for the entire series. Chris Kreider okay, was so, so good. At, like he was, and he was, he had his opportunities. And the Rangers like tried to cycle, and they tried to pass, and they tried to do everything. But the, 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 to be the, fair, like, to be fair, the look Tarasenko has, that's a great look, and a, that's it, hard work. Sure, I'm that's, not saying it's not. At the end of the day, they had so many opportunities to score a goal, and they just and they never got. That, that, that Tarasenko shot was was a good chance. I, listen, that's that was a good shot. And Zibanejad, I think, had one or two. I think he kind of flubbed a one timer that that yeah. Schmidt got a got a glove on. He didn't get all of it. But the the Rangers never looked overly dangerous on the power play, no. and that they was didn't look that dangerous was their any capacity. That was their game. bread and butter the whole year. That was their trump card the entire season. Was just stay afloat five on five and on, don't take penalties against us because we're going to score nine goals and win the game. The Rangers looked awful the entire game and they got what they deserved. That's ultimately what I think has some merit to this conversation is this is what the Rangers deserve. They built this team to play one specific way, and that's the only way they were going to be able to be successful. They did not give themselves a lot of avenues to be successful. They didn't have multiple styles of play. They didn't get the depth scoring that they got in last year's playoffs. The kid line didn't really make a, make an impact in this series. Hell, the second line didn't really make an impact in this series. If it wasn't for Kreider and Zabinijad, the Rangers probably don't score anything in this series. I mean, Trocek had one goal. I want to say Zabinijad and Kreider had the rest. Trocek had one. I don't, if Kane has won, yeah, we're talking about a really poor distribution of offense. And the entire point of overloading on the talent they got at the deadline was we're going to be able to outscore our defensive issues. And largely, I didn't think the defense structurally was bad. The breakouts were god awful. They were atrocious tonight. And I get it. Gallant preaches the off the window and out, survive to the next play. That's great. But if you do that, eight of the 10 possessions you have to exit the zone in your guys are going to wear out over the course of the game. And that's what happened tonight. The Rangers didn't really give up a ton of great chances against Jack Hughes had the one breakaway. He probably should have gotten a penalty for that, but I don't really need, we don't really need to argue about that in a four, nothing game. They had two, three good chances in the first period. Other than that, kept them mostly to the outside, a couple block shots. The Rangers did not meet they didn't meet the threshold for playoff success. They did not find that style in the playoffs that they needed. We've talked all year. The kid line was successful when it was engaged in the cycle, high to low, point shots, rebounds, or when they'd be able to win those board battles along the half. Speaking of board battles, I don't think the Rangers lost won a single loose puck tonight. I feel like every single loose puck that was up for grabs, a devil won. And the Devils had great puck support tonight, too. Yeah. Yeah. Every single time there was a chance to win a loose puck, there were two red sweaters down there, and there was one white sweater getting out leveraged. And the Rangers are a talented team, and that's what makes this so frustrating, because you know they can play better than this. We are sitting here once again at the end of a season, looking around at each other wondering where did these guys go where did the 90 point forward where did the 35 goal guy where did these guys go it can't possibly be it, it can't be the mental thing these are these are veteran professionals here we're yep. talking about guys who have 5 10 15 rounds of playoff experience here we're not talking about Kako Hito Lafreniere if they have a quiet series okay they're still kind of trying to find their legs none of them are particularly fast against a fast team like the Devils you can kind of excuse them it's not it's not a good thing to excuse but guys like Panarin Kreider Trocheck Zabinijad Kane Tarasenko these guys have been here 
they have been here, and they should know that the easy stuff's not going to be here in the playoffs. We cannot do the lateral stuff in the off the neutral zone because we need to worry about getting to offense. Get to offense, make the other team work. The Devils made the Rangers work tonight, and the Rangers said, no, we don't want to play hard tonight. And they just didn't. They never met they never met the standard the Devils set in the game tonight. The Devils said we're playing this game our way, and the Rangers never counterpunched once. I, I you know, I hope Gerard Gallant, and we'll we'll talk about the coaching, you know, when we do our year interview, except we we have like 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 you said, we have a whole summer to kind of dive into the nitty gritty. I hope Gerard Gallant gets a good price for the timeout that he never used on the black market. <laughs> I, I really hope that whatever price he's set on, you know, whatever website he uses that you can't access on a norm, on normal Google, on the dark web, on the deep web, whatever you want to, whatever he uses. Does I hope the Silk Road got, still exist? I, I, that's a, you know, that's, that, you can ask me a lot of questions that I might know the answer to that one. Uh, that one, I that's out of my realm. But, I just hope he got a good price for it because again, the rain, like he, he has the, this is now the second time in, in a series that I, that I very much remember Jar Gallant now using his timeouts. The first one obviously being when he was in Vegas, when San Jose scored a bunch of power play goals and Jar Gallant said, no, nah, I'm going to sell the, sell the timeout afterwards. All good. And then Vegas blew the series. And now this one, where the Rangers had nothing. Adam Fox with a brutal turnover. He I don't know what was going on with him this series. Him and Kreider, like, like, awful communication. He was awful. He was terrified of shooting the puck. Like Adam Fox is gifted offensively as he is gifted defensively. And he was terrified of shooting the puck. I don't really know what that was about, but he like he looked scared. And I and I, I don't and I, I I can't answer why, but it looked as if he was he was willing to do anything on the planet besides get the puck on net. But Adam Fox with a brutal turnover in his own zone on the power of play, and New Jersey just waltzes in and scores the first goal. Gerard Gallant has to call a timeout there. He has to call a timeout there because up until that point, the Devils have absolutely dominated the entirety of the game. And Adam Fox, the guy that you depend on the most, has a brutal giveaway in his own zone. There's no communication, and the Devils just waltz in and open the scoring. You have to call the timeout. What? What else are you? you what else are you saving it for? What is it for then? That is where you call it. You have to call it and you have to talk to the team and you have to calm them down and you have to give them a game plan because whatever they were doing up to that point clearly wasn't working. You have to talk to them. He didn't do anything. That's a, that's, that's a disgraceful coaching job. It's, it's disgraceful. They have a field trip chaperone coach. I, I've been saying this for three months now. He's there to make sure everybody shows up to practice and the game's on time and someone hands in the lineup sheet. He is not making critical decisions other than pulling numbers out of a hat to set up the lines. That's it. He does not have a great feel for this stuff. And you thought maybe he kind of gotten a grasp on it because he did the hardo thing after game four where he said, we played awful, that's the worst we've played, blah, 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 the hardo thing. And then they lose badly in game five. And then he does the, I liked our effort, even though we <laughs> lost by a worse score. Yeah, you yeah. could tell he was kind of trying to get a feel for it, get, try and get it back on the tracks. And I felt pretty good coming into the game tonight, just based on, just based on the goalie. And I, I want to just, Igor don't deserve this man. He no. really does. No, he no, did, no, no. He did everything he possibly could to keep them in this game. And when uh, you just said it, when guys like Fox and Kreider are the reason that guys like Michael McLeod are scoring goals, uh, it's not your night. It's just, there's not, it's not your night. And Igor doesn't deserve this. And uh, the, the affliction of the great goaltender is a real curse. It's a blessing and a curse because teams overvalue their defense because they think their defense is better than it is because they have the great goalie and the great goalie does everything they can masks as many issues. And I forget who made this analogy. Someone made this analogy like 10 years ago at this point, but the way they always describe it is in the playoffs when you're on a team that's goalie dependent is the goalie is standing in a body of water and you're sitting on their shoulders and you keep leaning forward and forward and their head keeps getting closer and closer to the water line. 
And the worse you play, the more he's underwater. And yeah. the Rangers entirely got Shesterkin underwater tonight. There was nothing he could do. You could see Henrik Lundqvist in the second intermission when yeah. he was – what, like he was trying to describe the way the Rangers were playing without shedding tears because he saw the war flashbacks. He saw what he went through for 15 seasons in New York. He did the exact same thing where he stood on his app. He stood on his head saving absolute. If it was anybody else goal after goal after goal, this man stood on his head playoff round after playoff round, sa- saving everything in his, in his power. To, to just get the Rangers there, and the team lets him down year after year after year. And he was watching this now. The exact same thing happened, but now he's on the sidelines. And now he has a front row seat to witnessing the exact same thing that he went through his entire career as a Ranger. It is disgusting. It is absolutely a joke, and it is a failure on the organization for what they've done this year. So I wanted to circle I, the word I've been trying to think of how I would describe this season. And I think we can tie it back to the season preview we did with Sam, where he said, everybody, the expectation is we're making the playoffs guys are, can we start the playoffs already? And you felt the entire season, they never got in any good rhythm. They didn't form good habits. They went through the motions for long stretches of the season. They got hot power play. They got hot goaltending. They climbed out of that gutter they were in in early December. They managed to finagle their way to the deadline. They added pieces and said, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. The word I would use to describe it is entitled. They felt entitled to be here. They felt that they would be able to turn it on when they needed to. That it doesn't matter. We have bad habits now. It's January. It's February. It's March. It's April. It's May. We'll figure it out. Don't yeah. worry. We have all this. Talent. Well, you Look know what? Good, good news. You're good telling news. us we're going to lose. Good news, Gerard Gallant. You might not be here for this, but the Rangers have five months to figure it out. Nice. Two thumbs up. And I, I do want to one other point on the entitlement theme. Anyone, I, I've seen more than one person say this, so I'll, I'll give credit where it, I'll give credit to the internet. I'm not the first person to make this point. The vibe entirely changed when they when the news broke that they were going to acquire Patrick Kane. Everything about the team, the way it was playing, the way it was constructed, the energy around the team, it changed. They had to play those games shorthanded. Everybody that reinforced the, oh, it doesn't matter what happens now. We just got to get to the playoffs. We're this good. We can get as soon as we get in, That's we're going to be fine. Because look, look around this room. We're going to add Patrick Kane to this team. And we need to worry about how we're playing right now against the Capitals who are in a playoff team. Give me a break. That is the energy that came off. We don't care how these games go. We're going to dress 17 guys. We're going to dress 16 guys. It doesn't matter. This game doesn't matter. And they just kept waiting for it to come on, it to come on. And you saw glimpses of it. It was there in games one and two. And then the Devils punched them in the mouth, winning in overtime, kind of out of nowhere, got them with a lucky shot. And then the Rangers were kind of had the bloody nose, you know, the effect in the movies where the guy lands the lucky punch and then the big bad guy looks at the blood in their mouth. And then suddenly the other person starts to rally and then beats the shit out of them. That's what just happened. That is exactly what just happened. They gave the devils that little bit of confidence. And then the Rangers started looking around like Papa Doc at the end of eight mile and they didn't have any answers. They did not have any answers for what the devils were doing. It, it it all ties back to the, we'll be fine. Once we get in the playoffs, look at all this talent. A sense of entitlement that this group, because of the talent that was here, was going to go far. And I, I cannot wait. I, I, I know we're doing this live right now. I cannot wait to read. I am ecstatic to wake up tomorrow morning to read the the Rangers lack grit. I cannot. I can't wait, wait for Andrew. That. Yeah. We're so oh, yeah. there. We're yeah, so yeah. there. Oh yeah. Early exits. Uh, yeah. The the Rangers they're gonna get, miss. They're gonna, they're gonna get Jack Johnson back. That's what's gonna happen. Andrew. Andrew. The Rangers miss Ryan Reeves is going oh, my to God. hit like yes. crack in yes. the eighties. 
Oh, I it can't is going wait. to hit like crack oh, in the dude. 80s. The streets are going to be shook. The Rangers missed Ryan Reeves. They missed right. Patrick Nemeth. Yeah, that's the reason that's the Rangers couldn't score a goal in two right. of the seven games of the series. The lack of Ryan Reeves is eight yeah. minutes a game. Right. Uh, I tweeted this out, you know, or I think it was in the third period, where I, I just w- I wish going back that the Rangers would have lost that game against the Blues back in December. Oh, yeah. Because if they had lost that game, Gerard Gallant would have been out the door. And the Rangers would have been in this. I mean, obviously, we don't know what would have happened with a new coach. But I would imagine the Rangers would have played better than they did leading up to that excursion against St. Louis. If they had lost that game and they have, and they would have, let's let's pretend. For, I mean, this is all you know theoretical. But let's just pretend for a second that the Rangers go on the exact same run that they did uh, post that St. Louis Blues game with Gallant with another coach. Oh, I don't I don't know who it would have been. And I don't care. You could have hired somebody off the street to coach this team. And I would have had more faith in the Rangers winning a playoff series than with Gerard Gallant. This man doesn't Andrew know. Andrew Burnett, come on down. This, Andrew uh, Burnett, come on down. And, dude, Andrew Burnett would be such a good coach. Oh, my God. I would love Andrew Burnett. but And I would also love Mike Sullivan, to the to the dismay of Hunter Hodes, uh, our, our Penguins friend, who I constantly tease that the Penguins are going to fire him so the Rangers can hire him. Rem- remember, remember now, he was assistant coach at the Rangers about a decade ago before he got hired by the Penguins. I'm just saying, I'm not saying anything, but I'm just saying, listen, like Gerard Gallant, I don't know if he knows what like mid game adjustments are. I don't know if he knows not he, his job. Clearly, he's a, he's clear, a player's coach. Right. Clearly doesn't know what timeouts are. I mean, this man, he does because he's selling him on the black market. He, he makes a pretty penny off of those. He doesn't make those. Like and we've seen it the entire playoffs, where the Rangers play the exact same way for seven games, but Lindy Ruff makes the. But also, 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 this man got out coached by Lindy Ruff, bro. You got out coached by Lindy Ruff. Get the. I'm not gonna listen. I'm not cursing on this show. You can. I. 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 I you know. Get the blankety blank off this team, bro. Get. Get the hell off of this team. Like, oh, dude, you, I'm so sick and tired of the way Gerard Gallant coaches this team. Like, the the absolute arrogance uh, during interviews, the absolute arrogance behind the bench during games. I'm so over it, man. I'm so sick and tired of it. I don't care if, if, the, if the next head coach says a word to the media to whoever Bro, he wants hire to a mute person. Oh, hire someone dude, hire somebody, somebody without a tongue. I don't care. <laughs> hire, you know, you know, that scene in, in the Pirates of the Caribbean where they cut yeah. the, they cut the tongue off the pirate. Yeah. He's the next head coach. Of the Rangers. I don't care. Can they coach the team? That'd be, I mean, it'd be funny. Imagine I mean, that, bro. It, a parrot? It, it, be it'd, be, it'd be a gimmick for sure. A parrot, a parrot yelling at Larry Brooks. Uh, that would uh, be amazing. That'd be, that'd be incredible. Give me all the content. Uh, I just we just got a comment saying hire Joel Quenville. I I will quit no. being a hockey fan before if that happens. I genuinely will never watch a hockey game if they hire Joel Quenville. I'm but not on Joel but Quinville, like I, I don't. We just did this. We bolted on the corpse of the Blackhawks onto this team, and it made right, things exa- worse. Yeah, I am not. I, listen, the last I, thing this yeah. party needs is a second dead body. That's yeah, that's not that's needs. not happening. Get Joel Quenville as far away from this team as possible. And I guess same with Mike Babcock. If we're gonna if we're gonna just throw out names like that, that's one, uh, Mike Babcock is one of the three NHL coaches James Dolan knows. Okay, yeah. that is not out of the realm I of possibility. It, that's the but issue. Like, I that, I don't I don't care if you hire a mute to be the next head coach. Can they one coach and two? Do they know how to make mid game adjustments? Because the current coach doesn't know what that is, how to do it, how to approach doing that. He's got nothing. Next so, head coach, whoever that is, please. That's I, I. I need that for my body okay. and my soul. Please, I need that. Okay, so you've given me an interesting idea to stem off of what we were talking about before, talking about how they, the reason they brought this coach in was they felt they could trust their group. They trusted Kreider, Zabinijad, Truba, Panarin, etc. To kind of, you know, Gaudreau to some extent, to keep everything, you know, that's the whole point of doing the players coach thing is that you believe in your group and your group will handle the issues. Clearly, in terms of the on-ice results, 
ends the off ice decision making, whatever you want to call what the leadership group is in charge of vibes, whatever you want to call it. All Jacob Truman did, by the way, was knock out Timo Meyer in the entire series. Yes. Great. Eight million dollars. Leader hey, leadership. Man. He threw the helmet though, Nick. That's the leadership group. Andrew, he threw the helmet. Andrew, a thin is you saying after Truba violently concussed him, he has to do stuff like that because he's got gets paid eight million dollars a year and doesn't score goals. I mean, I, he got he got ethered, and like I get it. L plus ratio, wearing, like he absolutely got L plus ratio. Plus he fell off. Like that's you can't come back from that. Yeah, like I get it. The tribalism jumps out. It's a clean hit. It's a yes by league rules. It's a clean hit. Yes, it's an unnecessary hit. Absolutely, Look, there is no point of making that play other than to try and knock that guy through the ice. Even if he's looking up and he hits him square in the chest, he's bouncing his head off of the ice backwards. So, uh, it's a clean hit. Yes, there was no penalty. There won't be a hearing. There won't be a suspension. It, whatever. It's unnecessary. Right. That's all I got to say about that. So. Before we kind of, I don't want to do too much big picture stuff because, like I said, content is kind of hard to come up with when there's no news and it is May 1st and it's going to be a long summer. We have five months, essentially. Five and a half. uh, Let's just say five and a half because preseason will probably be middle of October. We're going to have the draft, you know, late June. So that's going to be a day where we. Don't the Rangers not have a first round pick? Nick, don't, 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 don't you, don't you dare. Well, we have free agency to talk about. Woo! And then we have nothing for months. So happy days. We we need we need we need to stretch out our content as much as we can because we have we have a lot of time to fill because the Rangers decided to exclusively only try to go for sports center top ten plays instead of scoring on a twenty two year old netminder who hasn't played in a playoff series prior to this. They tried all of the low danger shots that you could possibly shoot on a goalie. They tried, you know, it's, it's that meme of like, you know, my work here is done, but you did nothing. And then he just leaves like that. Like that's yes. what they did on a Kirishman where they, you know, the, the game six, they finally broke open. And that's after game six, you kind of think to yourself, you know, Oh, they've, they have some confidence playing against a guy that has given up two goals in three games prior to game six like this is okay they score five clearly they they've you know they've gotten out of, out of that funk in their own head like you know oh hey we can score on this guy like oh it's it's fine everything's gonna be fine and then they go shut out again like this is it, it is such an embar- like it's embarrassing this is an utter embarrassment for the franchise to get to the conference finals oh run it back with Tarasenko and Patrick Kane and get dumpstered in the first round by your divisional rival, a team that didn't make the playoffs last season, the New Jersey Devils embarrass you in seven games in the first round. It is an embarrassment on the franchise. It is an epic failure. I think, I think the biggest thing that's embarrassing is you blew a two, nothing lead. Yeah. That's and you had a chip. I, I think that's, I think there you can lose a best of seven series to a, a team that's pretty close to you, if not a little more talented, but with less experience. I think the Rangers and Devils pretty close. I mean, the series prices were pretty close to even. The odds, most places, 55-45 in that range, etc. Relatively even. If they had lost in seven games and, you know, there's two or three overtime games in there, you can live with that. To get shut out multiple times, only score one goal in two of the four games as well, two of the seven games as well, just... There's too many. There's too many things, and we're gonna obviously get more context and more understanding as we go along. Obviously, we're doing this live now, right after the game ended. I haven't watched any of the press stuff. Every now and then, when I've picked up my phone, I've been going back and forth, between, refreshing between Molly and Vince, looking for quotes to just kind of get a get an understanding. Because, like we said, this team is really talented, and to just completely no show, that's either a mental thing, that's a legitimate like mental soft weakness just not being able to get up for the moment not knowing what to do or stubbornness which i don't know which one is worse but it's one of those two a pure stubbornness that our way is going to work we're going to keep doing it even though it's not working the amount of times tonight they entered the zone 
nobody forechecked, nobody got after the puck, and the Devils exited without even getting a scoring chance. Not a shot on goal, a scoring chance. I stopped counting after 15. I stopped counting because those are the signs of effort. You want to say they're dinged up, and I'm sure guys are playing with things. Sure. I'm sure we're going to see surgeries, guys playing with dinged up things. They no-showed tonight. They completely no show tonight. Other than Shesterkin and Tyler Mott, complete no show yep. tonight. And and Jay Fresh put out a tweet that said Artemi Panarin finished the series with one single five on five point, and that and even that was a secondary assist. I mean, yes. at a certain at, like, listen, I I was I was fairly confident last season that he was hurt in in the playoffs, and he might have like he might be hurt this playoffs as well. I don't know. The bottom line is that Panarin has essentially disappeared in multiple playoff runs now. And I you would think that Paner- Panarin of all players, the dynamic forward that he is, would be able to generate more offense than that. You would think that he would show up at least one game out of the seven. That I didn't Zibinich, even need him to show up. That, for, I just Z- needed him to not be bad. He that was Zibinich, bad. right? That Zibinijad would show up because he, like he, over the last five games, he had an okay game six. Where was he? Chris Kreider scored all of the goals. He was in Nico Heischer's back pocket. That is where Mika Zibinijad was. I mean, was. like the Rangers, Tarasenko had an okay series. Like he he was relatively yeah. noticeable for for stretches. I mean, of all the of all the fo- of all like the top end forwards that that needed to show up, Tarasenko definitely was a forward that was noticeable. He was somebody that at least tried some of the time to get something done. So, like everybody else, Patrick Kane had an okay one game. He was okay on offense the latter half of game seven when he like tried to get in something done. But at that point it was just too late. Like Kane was awful the entire series, except for that one game where he scored that really cool goal. Like that was it. I mean, it's almost as if we talked about for months and months and months and months and months and months and months, and months on end, Nick. We're not doing Patrick I told Kane you so yet. We're is, not doing I told you so yet. We're is, not is, doing I told you so well, yet. Take it deep listen. Breath. Take a deep breath, Andrew. We're I mean, not doing it, it's job. it's it's the point I'm trying to make is that the the stars that were supposed to be stars on this team did not show up, and a whole lot of right. that is is on the stars, and a whole lot of that is on the coaching staff for not adjusting to make their stars available to create space for them. the The entire adjustment that Gerard Gallant made in the series was make the defensemen go full out attack mode where defense yes. was, it was optional. Very funny to see Mikola and Truba standing in front of the net. Like oh yeah. 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 I mean, uh, like, on the Bruins power play, that shit was hysterical. The, like in, either of those guys could deflect the puck to save their life. The entire in-game adjustment that Gerard Gallant made was, Hey, defenseman, don't defend anymore. Just go out and try to score. Just go and screen the goalie, get, get in deep behind the net. Let the forwards handle it. For I, 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 I don't know. It was, it was just absolutely Andrew, just. If you it's embarrassing. It is absolutely Kane embarrassing. Checking against Jack Hughes or Nico Heischer, you got to do it, man. I Anytime mean, you can have Patrick Kane with his arthritic hip try and defend Nico Heischer, you got to do it. You got to do it, man. It is the most. It, this is the most embarrassing night for the Rangers in a very long time. I mean, like, you know, even even the, the last few years, you know, you lose to Tampa Bay, you still make it to the conference finals. You go through a couple of lean years where, you know, you didn't make the playoffs yet because the team is bad. Of course you're not going to make the playoffs. You know, you lose in the you lose in that bubble playing weird thing against Carolina. Okay, that team was really bad and they, you know, I don't even think they kind of deserve to be like they were like to be there. They they were, they were bad and they got shut and they got shut out by Carolina. Fair, well deserved. They shouldn't have probably have even been there. They're a bad team. All good. Now this year, uh, you know, last year they make the conference finals. They lose to they lose to Tampa Bay. Really, like a, a, a wow, what a run! No one expected that. Now they're going to come back this year and hopefully get to the same place. They get embarrassed in the first round, looking the way they did in games three, four, five, and seven, and, and all f- in. In most of their losses, I'll give I'll excuse Game Three because Rangers played well. In games four, five, and seven, 
the Rangers looked like they looked like throughout the season where they when they would play a team like Arizona, where uh, where they just did not care, where they just showed up physically, expected everything to go their way because of who they are. They expected to get two points. They expected to get the win and they expected to get on their merry way. And what happened a lot of those times throughout the season was that the the lesser, quote unquote, lesser team would come in and dumpster them at five on five. And a lot of the times the Rangers would lose. And then and then in the in the press, they're like, ah, oh, you know, we didn't play well. Oh, whatever. It's not a big deal. Well, they did the exact same thing in the playoffs. And now they're going golfing. Oh, you know, it's it's almost as if. If it's a problem during the regular season, you might want to fix it before you get to the playoffs. But hey, what do I know? I'm not the head coach of a hockey team. I mean, I'm I'm 100% going to fire up my Xbox later and beat the shit out of the Devils to feel a little bit better about myself. But we've got I'm, dude, like another 10, 15 minutes before we both pass out i'm so tired andrew i was in a car seven hours today i saw cars go in a circle for four hours i've had a very long day but i I, am very glad that i i've got just it could be worse it could be worse that's what i'm gonna tell myself to get through this yes it's curtains up there in boston because bergeron everything about the way bergeron acted when that game ended he's he he looks done crazy looks done yeah, it could be worse. That's what I'll tell myself to not lose my sanity. Um, I expect we'll know about the coach by the end of the week. I, I feel like the Rangers, have, when they've changed coaches, have been pretty deliberate about not dragging ass. Uh, if Gallant's going to come back, I feel like we'll probably have a good grasp on that by the weekend. I imagine we'll have breakup day probably Wednesday. They usually give them one day off after you get eliminated Wednesday. Exit interviews Thursday, Friday, and then we'll probably know about Gallant by the time we do another episode. Then again, these are the Rangers. We could be, as soon as I hit end stream, the Rangers could fire Gallant because Dolan was woken up from his slumber that the Rangers <laughs> lost tonight because there's not a chance in hell James Dolan was watching that game live. Gerard Gallant <clears throat> also, by the way, just said it could have been 7-2. Shesty was really good. My brother in Christ, where are those two goals coming from? <laughs> like, where? Where are they coming from? I need to know. I need to know uh-huh. where you have imagined. You're being very goals. generous with two, Gerard. Yeah, where? Where'st? Where'st? From whomst are they coming from, Ger- if you Gerard? Give them the where? Post, if, if you want to give them the If Gallant wants to give them the one post they hit, okay, fine. I'll give you 7-1. I don't know about 7-2, dog. Uh, dude, it was uh, looking quiet for they that. Got, they got called this man an Uber. I mean, I can't. I'm so, I'm so sick and tired of this man. He's. He, the, the, I think I saw uh, the quote tweet from Pete Blackburn, and he said, he's inventing imaginary goals and still only gave his team two of them. Also, where are the two coming from? I don't even know. I don't. I'm I'm sick and tired of this man, Nick. I'm so sick and tired of him. Oh no, e- Ethan just texted me. I hope the Rangers hire Daryl Sutter so you get arrested by Homeland Security. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, don't put that God. evil on me, Ethan. Please don't oh, put that evil no. on me. No, well, then again, I, if I go to, if I go to CIA jail, I don't ever have to worry about the Rangers again. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 this I is mean, a little tempting. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, well, truthfully, I, I mean, I, I, do, I don't think they go after Daryl Sutter, Dar- Daryl Sutter, mostly for your sanity, but also they just watched him get him. Like he had a good Flames team, and they didn't even make the playoffs because of his coaching. So, like, it some of it was because of Jacob Markstrom not being able to stop a beach ball, sure, but a lot of it was because of Daryl Daryl Sutter's coaching decisions. So, I, I. For for That's your for your about, sake, Andrew. Nick. For your sake, Nick. I I I don't think he'll be the Rangers head coach. But I listen. So Andrew, stranger the things thing have I'm happened. Worried about is teams pendulum this. They go authoritarian players coach, authoritarian players coach. We just did the players coach. We're going to the authoritarian hard ass, which leaves not a lot of candidates that really excite me, which is what makes this all terrifying. Because Pizza Boy was watching this game from the visitor's box. And Pizza Boy, when he gets his ideas about what a team needs, he uh, he doesn't do half measures when Pizza Boy decides the Rangers <laughs> need something. We need more skill. Okay, Kane, Tarasenko, Tyler Mott. We need more grit. Ryan Reeves, Patrick Nemeth, Barkley Goodrow. I am scared for what Pizza Boy thinks this team needs and what that might look like. 
There are not a lot of expensive guys who can be moved. Um, their best assets are all depreciated because they all just had miserable playoffs. Um, they have one notable junior prospect in Brennan Othman. They have picks next year. I'm very scared for what Drury thinks they need. Adam Sakura is, is, to my understanding, he's, a good, a notable prospect. That's well. a middle six guy. That's a middle six guy. Yeah. He's not. He he's never going to be. Uh, the Rangers need more high end talent. But we've been saying the Rangers high end talent is fine. It's good. Uh, the Devils high end talent is better. Jack Hughes is better yeah. than Zabinajad. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Jack Hughes is better than Zabinajad. He sure is better than Trocek. Uh, if you want to argue Timo Meyer versus Chris Kreider, sure, we can have that argument. But I'll give you Panarin over whichever other Devils wing. But then you start going down that lineup, and it's like Dawson Mercer versus Patrick Kane or Tarasenko. And it, it, the, the advantage the Rangers have is Fox is better than Dougie, and Shesterkin's better than whichever goalie the Devils throw in there. But it doesn't matter how good your high-end talent is if it doesn't show up which was the entire argument against doing the all-star all offense team, which is why I, I, I really, really was looking for like a Nino Nita rider, or yeah. I was looking for, I don't know, not Tanner, you know, but somebody of that ilk, somebody what who a terrible trade that was in pocket. Tampa Bay. I mean, that was, cups, that was, that was, and I treat like that was one of the worst deals in NHL history. This is a fourth liner and you give up a five picks and Cal foot for, for that. I, okay, I mean we're 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 steering off course here, but like, I, I it's it's really funny because everybody on the planet besides Julian Breezeball was like, that's a terrible deal for Tampa Bay. Why would they do that trade? It makes no sense. But Julian Breezeball, because he has the he ha, because he has the the green button on on his in in the GM's office to 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 go right ahead and do whatever he wants, said, you know what, this is this is a good deal. I'm sure it won't backfire or anything. This is fine. And it's a bad deal. Oh no! If anybody, if if only somebody could have predicted that. But yeah, I, like the Rangers, we talked about this. We wanted Nick Bukestad. We wanted we wanted more guys that no, were. What happened with Nick Bukestad? Look at our boy Nick Bukestad. He's doing well. Look at our He's boy Dylan well. Strom. Yeah, I, I, like listen. If if only there was if only there was a, a hockey podcast that had the Rangers' best intentions in mind that really wanted them to succeed. I don't, I don't know. I don't know where you that's can find the them, Nick. That, that's the difference. We that's the biggest barrier between thinking like a hockey person and thinking the way we do. We don't have agendas. We just want the team to win. Right. I don't care. Yeah. They want to be right. They want to win yeah. the way they want to win. Yeah. And that's the difference. The Rangers said, oh, we have an opportunity to win a Stanley Cup. And we can add guys who've won cups in other places. We can sell t-shirts. We can do the big fanfare. We can do the press conference. We can do the Panarin and Kane content. Yeah. Give me a break. Give me a they break. actually have to win. Yeah. They actually have to win. Yep. And, I'll, and I'm guilty of this too. I got really excited after the first two games of this series. I really started to think Stanley Cup run reasonable. I didn't think I didn't know about winning the whole thing, but I thought making the cup final was reasonable. And the kick in the dick is that the East is wide, wide open. open. The Rangers are more talented than probably all of these teams. Uh, they, there's a real argument that the Rangers have enough talent to compete with every single one of these teams in the East and every single one of the teams left in the West. I think the Rangers missed this. I thought last year was going to be their best shot because as they got so deep and that ultimately turned out to be right. I think this team is more talented than last year's team, but it just never developed any type of chemistry or um, mojo to play in these big tight games. And it never got to that point. I think this team is more talented than that team. I thought the Rangers would probably take a step back this year, but this feels kind of like, like a fatal a fatal situation. Like I'm trying to think yeah. of like, it kind of feels like, Oh shit. Everything we thought we knew about this team doesn't really kind of work. Like if Zabinijad and Panarin and Kreider and Trocek are, you know, all of your expensive guys locked up for a significant amount of time. And they were more or less other than Kreider rendered ineffective against the devil's team. Who's not even the best team in the NHL. 
What are you going to do if you have to play the Leafs in a, a conference final in a year or two, or the Oilers, or the Stars, or the Golden Knights? What are you going to do when the other team has Jack Eichel and Mark Stone on the ice at the same time, and you're down a goal, and you cannot get the puck away from them? We're, we're at a real impasse now, and we're, we'll try and get creative. We'll get a better understanding about what the Rangers think is the problem with the Rangers very quickly. Because like I said, if they move on from the coach, it's pretty clear what they think the problem is. The roster obviously needs work. There's a lot to talk about in that respect. What do you want to leave the people on for the last five, 10 minutes here? What what should our parting message be? That you still have Shesterkin in net. And at that, and anything can happen when you have the best goalie in the world, but between the pipes, Listen, like the the Rangers really are are at a crossroads right now in terms of what they do with their roster construction. They have a lot of money tied up in a lot of guys who did not show up during these playoffs. And it is up to Chris Drury to figure out what to do now. And you know, we we've talked about for months and months like what we thought were were going to be better moves. Don't get Patrick Kane, get s- any anybody else for that matter anybody get get the guy off the street get get the you know get get John Brancy to c- come in and skate like get him to do it John Brancy is an Eagles fan from Philadelphia he's using Ranger Flames to chip cloud chase don't <laughs> I, okay I'm not, all right I'm not, fine 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 I'm fine, not fine. dropping that take on the timeline because they've already adopted him way too seriously for a guy who's done the anthem like 10 times but yeah he's an Eagles fan from Philly go through his Twitter likes you'll see what he thinks about New York <laughs> Uh, but like, you know, you, you still, you still have Shesterkin. You, you have, you have the, Adam Fox. You That's have Adam is. Fox. I mean, you know, brutal giveaway aside, he's still the best player on the best skater on the team. He's still the most dynamic player on the team. He's, you know, he's still a Norris winning defenseman and one bad mistake isn't going to disrupt what is, you know, otherwise a, a, a phenomenal career to this point. So a lot of the pieces are still there. You know, the, the questions are going to start arising with, listen, the kid line played well, but Lafreniere had zero points. You know, Hito wasn't very noticeable for, for stretches. Kako wasn't very noticeable. It's a lot of, a lot of the tops. And we, we have also like, we had to talk about this as well. Keandre Miller had a brutal series, a brutal series. How much of that is with Truba? How much of that is just Kendra Miller? I don't know, and I'm not here to talk about that right now. Kendra Miller was, honestly, he was terrible in this series. And it is, it, it'll be interesting to see what, 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 Nick, what, what do you got? Yeah, Fitz tweeted, I'd say I can't believe they squandered a generational run by a goaltender like that. But, you know, that's kind of this organization's yeah, thing. That's, yeah. yeah. I, well, we talked about it earlier. Like, Lundqvist saw, you know, his, his PTSD. In, and Rangers in, in need to eyes. apologize he- to Henrik Lundqvist. Oh, yeah. Me. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I said this. I said this in the Twitter space that I that I hosted before the show, before, before the before the episode, uh, before the for game seven. That's like the, the, the Devils had no pressure going yeah. into this game. All of the pressure was on the Rangers. Because this is the veteran core. This is the team with Kane and Tarasenko and Shesterkin and Zabinajad and all these guys that have been there before. This is, you know, this is a team that traded and, and gave Barclay Goudreau a lifetime contract because he has rings. For moments like these, all of the pressure. His rings were was, too bright, Andrew. He blinded right, everybody yeah, else. Yeah, uh, right. Kar- Karis Levert has entered the building. But yeah, like it, the 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 Rangers had all of the pressure and the Devils had none of it. And you saw it in game seven. The Devils played that game so freely. They weren't afraid to make mistakes. They weren't afraid to handle the puck or, you know, make that make that extra pass. Or they, you know, like they, they weren't afraid to to do the right things essentially and the rangers for most of the game looked terrified of making the wrong decision and ultimately that backfired so heavy so much that the rangers didn't even score a goal like that's the saddest part about all this is that like if they would have at least scored a goal or two goals you could say that there was a, a battle but there was no battle the Devils dominated the entire game. And the Rangers, all they got to show for it was a big fat zero next to their team name in the game seven score sheet. They got nothing. So you remember the, the memes about when Porzingis won the skills contest at All-Star Weekend? 
and the, the Knicks hung a banner about it. <laughs> the Rangers need to hang a banner about Shesterkin playing so well. It could have been seven to two. Yeah, I, I, I think that I think that's what the Rangers need yeah. to hang from the rafters. Okay, this yep. is the last question I have for you before we get out of here. Of everybody who's left standing, who do you want to win the Stanley Cup? Not who do you think is going to win? Who would you like uh, to win the Stanley Cup? It'd be, it would be funny if Seattle did it. <laughs> it would be so funny. They it were would be Philip Grubauer. It, it would be absolutely hilarious. You can't tell me the content would not feed generations. Like the the content right now from Boston is going to feed generations for from for lineages down the line. This this year from from the Boston media is is going to feed lifetimes like i i'm gonna i'm gonna eat up that content every day for, for the rest of my life essentially but if seattle wins this this year oh man oh man or or even better if florida wins give me give me florida seattle final give it to me give me the content <laughs> give me the content gary oh man Bettman, gary I, I would... has a black van on his way to your house speaking of <laughs> seattle florida cup final there'll get, be get, 10 people watching oh my be everybody god who's watching get, the stream right now give me the content give give me all of it i i would love nothing more than for florida and seattle to make it to the final so that boston media won't shut up and then everybody else won't shut up because of the ratings i give me give me all of that nick give me yours Oh, Dallas, for sure, Dallas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dallas is a likable yeah. team. They've got a couple of my guys. Ottinger's yeah. awesome. No, actually, that would be bad because then the Rangers would like quintuple down on the magic goalie principle. On the uh, because like the Rangers don't have a Jason Robertson or a Rupe. No. It's like Mika can Mika's basically a Tyler Sagan facsimile, but a little bit better. Um, I'm trying to think. Eh. Who on the Rangers doesn't Toronto? go down on? No, I have no idea. I feel like yeah. the Leafs might have blew their load very prematurely because well, that's such a that's such a such a long build yeah. up, and then all the excitement, and then a three day layoff. Like they should beat Pitt, Florida. They should, should beat whoever comes out of depth. Yeah. The, well, uh, Florida should Florida should have lost to Boston, and you know you know where it should got us, Nick. You know where it should got us. Yeah. What it could have should have. Oh well. Yep. All right, uh, that'll do it for this week's episode of the Liberty Blue Podcast. Make sure you're subscribed. We're available on all the major podcasting platforms, video on YouTube as well, live on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube every Monday at 6 o'clock. The off-season content will start very soon because I imagine James Dolan is waking up from his nap and is going to find out the Rangers lost very soon. So we will more than likely probably talk to you guys before next Monday, but if not, we'll see you guys then. Later.